So the main lessons I've learned from these tanks, I would say, are... Hi everyone, George here and welcome to a new video from the GFS Gallery. In this video we're going to talk about the beautiful Awaze Starline 85, the white tank and the Starline 125 here. The 85 measures around 20 gallons or 75 litres and the 125 is 115 litres or about 30 gallons. They've both been set up around five or six months now and they've obviously evolved over those months and the aim of this video is to give you a rundown of the equipment, the plants, the aquascape itself, the maintenance practices that I've been doing, and also some lessons that I've learned from both of these aquascapes. And hopefully you can learn something yourselves as well. Hopefully enjoy the video. If you do, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. I'm excited about this one. I have to say, rimless tanks, will always have a special place in my heart. You know, aquascaping for me is about trying to capture as much beauty as you can from not just the aquascape itself, but the equipment. And rimless, you know, opti white glass, low iron glass, suspended lighting, glassware, you know, glass inlet, glass outlet, you know, almost making this floating column of water with minimum distraction so you can just focus on the aquascape. That will always be my number one preference as a passionate aquascaper that's really interested in the aesthetics. However, rimless tanks aren't for everyone, you know, and I've experienced this myself lately and having kind of had my hand not forced because I can keep rimless tanks if I want. In fact, I have my Tropica Aquacube and my Dua Paludarium. These are both rimless tanks. But as an Oase ambassador, of course, I'll be using Oase products. And of course, the Starline 85 and 125 are lidded tanks or rimmed tanks. Now, it's worth, I think, going over some of the advantages of rimmed versus rimless and vice versa, uh, because I have to say I was a little bit of a snob uh, when it came to rimless tanks. I thought, you know, go rimless or go home. But I haven't actually worked with these aquariums for several months now. The high line aquariums as well, this, the planted cichlid tank and now the planted discus tank. I've got a newfound kind of appreciation for lidded tanks. You know, there's virtually no evaporation. There's no jumping fish or escaping shrimp. And the heat is contained as well. So you're not using so much energy in heating that aquarium water, which is particularly uh, important with a discus tank. You know, I'm running at higher temperatures, evaporation is gonna be huge. And there's always the risk of, you know, jumping discus. You know, disadvantage of rimmed tanks is you can't have exposed hardscape. You know, a lot of nature aquarium style aquascapes have this you know, big pieces of wood coming out, emergent plant growth, etc. You know, we can't really achieve that in a rimmed tank. But, you know, use that to its advantage. You know, it's, you've almost got a perfect frame and you can frame the aquascape and, and the actual aquariums and cabinets and the choice of the trim, you can match with your interior decor. So for instance, with this black Starline 125, I've got the black framed moss art above it. So that matches really well. And then the white tank here, it kind of just matches the general decor of the gallery. I've got white ceiling, white trim, off-white walls, and we've got the Highline 175, which is white as well. So it all kind of works quite coherently. So although, you know, there might be some sacrifices in the overall aesthetic of the equipment, I think it's a really good compromise to have this kind of style. Okay, let's talk about the Starline 85 in more detail. As I said, holds about 20 US gallons or 75 litres. It's quite a tall aspect ratio, so the height to width ratio is in favour of the height, slightly longer, but this suits taller bodied fish. So I've got tall bodied tetras in here, lemon tetras, black neon tetras, and regular neon tetras. I also did have a pair of gouramis in there, but they were really kind of fighting and chasing the other fish around. So I've split the pair up and I have a, a single, I think the female's in here and the male's in here now. You know, arguably these are potentially too large for this aquarium. 
I am rescaping this. I'll talk about that at the end of the video. So let's talk about the actual uh, equipment. It comes supplied with two 8 watt LED lamps. My first thoughts were that these weren't going to be powerful enough, especially to grow carpeting plants. But I'm really pleased to say and, and show you that obviously we're getting really great results with, with this relatively low level of light. And I put that success largely down to a combination of things. So firstly, we're using CO2 injection. We're using a nutrient rich substrate with a Tropica soil and we're using a good quality liquid fertilizer every day. In this case, Tropica specialized nutrition. So that kind of trifecta of nutrients. So the carbon from the CO2, the nutrients from the soil and then the nutrients to feed the plant leaves through a liquid fertilizer really promotes really healthy plant growth. And actually, in my experience, you can get away with less light than you might originally think if you have the other things dialed in, i.e. the CO2 substrate and liquid fertilizers. So we're running eight hours a day using a regular plug-in timer. There's no ramping up or ramping down, very, very basic. It's the Awaze Classic line of LEDs. They do do a premium line, which I'm running on the planted discus tank, and I will do a, a complete video on that at some point in the future. But very simple lighting, two LED tubes rated at 6,500 Kelvin, which is perfect for bringing out the greens of the plants. As you can see, they're really popping. And the reds of the cherry shrimp and the colors and the tetras as well are really great as well. So no complaints whatsoever about the lighting. I have actually painted the background black with a blackboard paint, painted the external, the outside of the back of the glass there. This gives a beautiful matte finish, no air bubbles that you can get with the kind of the film that you can put on the back. So really happy with that. And the black also helps to contrast really well with the fish and the plants and the shrimp as well. Okay, let's take a little bit more of a look at this CA2 injection system. This is a pressurized system, as you can see. This is a six kilo pressurized cylinder here. Then we have this very special regulator from Green Leaf Aquarium. Shout out to those guys for supplying me this beautiful regulator, dual stage regulator. Here we adjust the working pressure here. And then here we have a solenoid. And then we have a manifold with two separate outputs. So two bubble counters with inbuilt non-return valves. The left-hand bubble counter with the CO2 proof hose goes to the Starline 85. And then the right-hand side with a slightly quicker bubble rate, as you can see, going over to the Starline 125. Now I have these on a solenoid. This comes on an hour before the lights come on and then the CO2 turns off an hour before the lights go off. And the reason for that is we like the CO2 level to build up prior to the lights going on. So as soon as the lights go on, the plants can begin photosynthesizing. And then we have the CO2 turn off before the lights go off so the plants can use up that residual CO2 in the aquarium water. So absolutely adore this regulator. Really great to have a system where you can run two tanks from one regulator, really high quality. And a top pro tip for you, I filled the bubble counter liquid with an MCT oil. And the reason I use an oil instead of water is that I find water gradually dissipates somehow. I don't know if it just gets through, evaporates through the CO2 hose or, but eventually it just disappears. So I found with the oil, and this MCT oil is, is clear, and I use it every day for, for my coffee. For those that don't know what bulletproof coffee is, do a bit of Googling maybe. Here you can see the CA2 diffuser. This is the Tropica 3-in-1 diffuser, which comes with a non-return valve, a built-in bubble counter, and the ceramic disc itself, which is removable so you can easily clean it. I'm running about one bubble a second on here. Looking inside the cabinet now, we've got the filter. This is the Awaze Filto Smart Thermo 100. It's the smallest external filter they do. It comes supplied with a heater. It's not particularly powerful, but it's producing great results in this tank. I mean, ideally I'll probably get something with a higher flow rate, maybe upgrade this to the Biomaster 250 at some point. The Filto Smart is a, a less premium product than the Biomaster, shall we say, but suitable for small tanks and those on a budget, of course. Over to the left, we've got some great dry food. This is brand new from Awaze called Organics. All organic uh, ingredients. I'll probably do a deeper dive into this food at some point, but just to say, getting great results, fish love it. So that's feeding the fish, and then we feed the plants with Tropica Specialized Nutrition. And at the moment, I'm adding three squirts of that a day. Let's talk about the aquascape itself. So the hardscape is Sirius Stone or Mini Landscape Rock. I've just got, I think, four or five stones around here. 
We've got some generic kind of bogwood, driftwood around here as well. Hardscape being the backbone of about, important to get a strong hardscape composition to start with and then build around it with the planting. Planting wise, they're all easy plants apart from this Blixia japonica, which is in the medium category, all Tropica aquarium plants, super high quality. Most potted, although there are some one to grow tissue culture in here as well. Let's start off with the foreground planting. This is Eleocharis parvula or dwarf hair grass. This is an easy carpeting plant. Doesn't actually need C2 injection to grow, but it will definitely benefit. It's staying quite short and compact in here, which was actually quite surprised that considering we're running relatively low lighting with the two eight watt tubes. Then we have the beautiful Staragini here. I have recently trimmed it right back. In fact, there is a, a detailed video on this process on the Tropica Aquarium Plants YouTube channel. So I do recommend subscribing to that. And I will leave links to all of the videos that have featured this aquascape. Uh, there are quite a few videos either on my channel or on the Tropica Aquarium Plants channel featuring this. So you can see the kind of various stages of development and, and how the aquascape has evolved. So the Staragani is looking great, really compact growth. Again, quite surprised considering the low lighting. Then we have some Anubius Petites, my favourite form of Anubius, my favourite variety of Anubius, maybe apart from Anubius Mini Coin, but that is super rare. Then the Blixer Japonica, actually turning a red colour. Again, I'm really surprised at that considering the low levels of lighting we're running. And then we're moving over to the Trident Fern here, Microsorum Trident. And then over to the back left, we have the Bacopa Compact stem plant. And this is covering up the filter inlet and outlet. So hardly any equipment on show here, obviously, apart from the CO2 diffuser. And I will be changing that clear hose to a black hose. So it's going to be hopefully camouflaged a bit more. And I might even change the diffuser to something a bit more discreet as well. So classic triangular layout. And I just really love this. This is one of the best aquascapes I've created in terms of a low effort versus high reward. So what I mean by that is it doesn't take much maintenance. The plants are growing slowly because of the low levels of lighting. The Bacopa Compact is a slow growing stem plant. So stem plants are usually the, the highest maintenance. So I've actually only trimmed the plants in here two or three times in the six months. And I think this is a, a really good example of what you can achieve with relatively low levels of lighting, but with the use of the CO2 injection, good soil and good fertilizers, you can really get this lush, healthy and algae free growth. So really happy with this, but time to move on and change it into something else. So let me know in the comments what kind of aquascape I should create in here. I do have some strong ideas. Those that from follow me on Instagram will know a potential idea I have for this. Uh, but let me know what you think. I mean, it is quite a small aquarium, 75 litres. So we are a little bit restricted on livestock choice. But I think we can do something really quite special again in here. And I'm really excited for the next journey. OK, let's talk about the style line 125 now. An interesting scape, this one. It's never really been structured in a way that I've had an end vision in mind. It, it has been more of a, an aquarium for creating content, especially for the Tropica YouTube channel. I've been doing lots of plant profile videos using content from this aquarium. In fact, I think almost every species in here that you can see, there will be a plant profile, a two or three minute video in depth on that particular species on the Tropica channel. So if you're a bit of an aquarium plant geek, then do check those out as well. But it's, I think it's looking great. It's evolved. I've made little adjustments here and there over the months. And it's something I wouldn't have deliberately set out to create, but just by kind of a, a natural evolution, it, it's turned out quite nice. The high impact plant here, the Altenanthra Reinekei Pink, uh, was put in, I think, just two weeks ago. I was actually quite lazy. I didn't even remove the plants from their pots. I literally just inserted the whole plant, including the pot, into the background. And it just shows that with good light, good nutrients, good CO2 in circulation, you can grow plants in almost any conditions. You know, you don't even need to remove them from their pot sometimes. This is an interesting plant here, the Hygrophila Compact, not very often seen in aquascaping. And it's one of the only Hygrophilas, maybe apart from the Hygrophila Araguaya, that will remain really quite compact. It is a fast grower and I have literally hacked it back a few times. I've got some curved scissors, got right down into near the rootstock, trimmed it right back. And within a few days, there's new growth. So a very interesting and easy 
foreground plant maybe that you want to consider trying yourselves. In the foreground as well, we've got Hygrophila araguaya here, which is a beautiful kind of needle leaf. It will turn a more red brown color under more intense lighting. We've got Blixia japonica here again. We've got a little bit of Microsorum trident, some Windelov fern as well. Some Eleocaris acicularis mini, and then there's some straggling bits of Hemianthus micranthamoides. There was a huge kind of bush of this, which I thought I removed it all, but obviously there's some stems that are just taking over. This is labelled as an advanced category plant, but in my experience it's actually quite easy and it's a very fast grower. And yeah, you can create foregrounds with it, midground or background, just because of the way it grows. So another plant that you might want to consider that you've not really thought about before, Hemianthus uh, micranthamoides. In the back left, we've got the Mandania Kaysak, which is again, a quite a rarely used plant, stem plant. It looks a little bit like bamboo. And there's some little bits of Valisneria nana in there as well, just to add a little bit more texture. Hardscape wise, we've got a couple of pieces of Frodo stone and then again, some more generic driftwood. So I think it's great. It's like I said, it's not a classic nature aquarium. It's not a Dutch style aquarium. It's just a heavily planted aquarium that looks pretty in my opinion. And for me, it's testament that you can get really healthy plant growth with a basic system. You know, this Awaze style line 125, you know, I would class it in a kind of medium cost category, but you can achieve, you know, quite premium results. I have upgraded the filter uh, from the supplied internal filter to a Biomaster 600 Thermo, which is massively overpowered in here. Um, but it was the only kind of spare external filter I had at the time. And of course, presents a lot less distraction on the aquascape versus that big corner internal filter. The lighting comes supplied with the two 12 watt LED tubes. Again, 6,500 Kelvin, but I have added another tube. So there's three tubes in there. So 36 watts of LED altogether. And that has allowed me to get this really nice growth, especially the reds in the Altenanthra there. There's even picking out some reds in the Hygrophila uh, compact as well. Uh, running an eight hour photo period. I tend to run eight hour photo periods on all my aquariums and it's uh, on a timer. And again, exactly the same kind of system in terms of the techniques that I'm using on the 85. I'm dosing four pumps of the Tropica Specialized every day because there is a little bit more plant growth in here due to the extra light and a little bit more volume as well. 115 litres versus 75 litres or 30 gallons versus 20 gallons. Livestock is a real mishmash in here. It's not my ideal thing to have so many different species of fish in one aquascape, but a lot of them were transferred over from previous aquascapes. So that is why there's a bit of a mishmash. They will get rehomed appropriately uh, when I do eventually rescape this aquarium. Let's talk about maintenance. Very straightforward on these two tanks. I maintain them both at the same time because it just makes sense. They're both obviously next to each other. And whilst you've got all the hoses out and all the kit and the tools, makes sense to make most efficient use of your time. So every week I do a 50% water change, but that water change is always the last part of the process. And the reason for that is every time we touch the plants, every time we remove any algae from the glass or the plants, or we lift any detritus, waste organics up from the soil, they float around the aquarium and then they can act as an algae trigger. So it's important to do that water change right at the last part of the process in order to dilute those potential algae triggering waste organics. I also clean the pre-filter of the Biomaster. Every month I clean the entire Filtosmart 100 filter as well. I clean the filter hoses every month and the glassware in here. This has got glass inlet and outlet and this comes with the supplied plastic inlet and outlet. It's important to keep your filter pipes and accessories clean in order to maintain efficient flow. If they get clogged up with excess organic waste, then this can limit the flow and therefore limit circulation. And then poor circulation often leads to poor water quality and algae issues, etc. Every day I dose the Tropica Specialized Nutrition, as discussed earlier, and I feed the fish normally once a day, sometimes twice a day. I trim the plants as required. And as I explained earlier, there are some dedicated trimming videos which I'll leave links to in the description. In fact, there's comprehensive maintenance videos on both of these aquascapes, if I remember rightly. So I'll leave links to those in the description as well. There we have it, the two Awaze Starline tanks, the 85 and the 125. 
let me know which is your favourite in the comments. I've really enjoyed living with these, but as always, you know, aquascapes have a finite life. And as an aquascaper and a content creator, I always get the urge to create new aquascapes and create new content for you guys. So with that in mind, I will be rescaping these fully quite soon. Not sure if it's going to be over the Christmas period or probably wait till the new year potentially. But let me know if you have any ideas of what you'd like to see in here. I have a couple of really good ideas. I think they're good ideas anyway. I really fancy doing a black water again. I haven't done one for a good while and I want to do it justice. I want to make a really strong kind of black water aquascape rather than just chucking a load of leaf litter and seed pods and a few random pieces of wood. I actually want to create a strong composition but also make it biotope correct and I have a few fish species in mind but let me know what you think in the comments. Obviously it has to be uh, black water friendly. So that's the idea for this and then for the 85 I am considering trying again at creating a Dutch style aquascape. So for those that don't know, Dutch style is a very formal style of aquascaping based on kind of rigid groups of stem plants. You know, everything has its place. It's a very formal, structured style of gardening and it really tests your skills as a plant grower and a plant maintainer as well with trimming techniques, replanting, etc. So I think it would do me good. You know, as a passionate hobbyist, I'm always looking to improve my skills and growing techniques, etc. So I think the Dutch style will tick that box, but it also hopefully look beautiful as well. So let me know what you think in, in the comments. I have tried Dutch a couple of times before. Mixed results it is a challenging style. Nature Aquarium lends itself to kind of going a bit chaotic, you know, letting things grow a bit wild, this wabby-sabby kind of concept of perfect imperfection. But the Dutch style is almost the complete opposite. Very formal, very rigid but beautiful nonetheless. Excited to try that one out potentially. I'll probably use exclusively as well the Tropica 1-2 Grow range because it absolutely gives me zero chance of getting any snails in there, no algae. We could probably create a complete Dutch scape in, in there from 10, 12 pots, so great value as well. So the main lessons I've learned from these tanks, I would say are that you can get great results surprisingly good results with relatively low levels of lighting, especially in this 85 aquarium. You know, two 8 watt lamps, eight hours a day, and you can see just how compact that growth is in the hair grass and the starogyne. All the plants are super healthy, there's zero algae issues, and that I believe is the combination of the relatively low lighting, but with good levels of CO2 and good maintenance, in combination with the nutrient-rich soil substrate there from Tropica, and the Tropica Specialised Nutrition Liquid Fertiliser every day. So I think that's, that's a lesson that hopefully some of you can apply to your own aquariums. You know, a lot of aquascapers or a lot of beginners in the aquascaping hobby or planted aquarium hobby have this assumption that you need loads of light to achieve success with your plants. I would argue start off with less light, but consider, you know, investing that money that you may have potentially spent on a higher intense lighting solution but actually invest that into CO2. Go for the easier plant species as well and slower growing plant species if you want less maintenance and you can get as you can see some really great results. So this is something I'll take forward into future aquascaping. You know I, I have five or six aquascapes running here at home right now all planted. They are does take a lot of maintenance of course the planted discus tank in particular you know, I am now only running the one light on there because the plants are doing okay. They're growing well. There's hardly any algae in there. The growth is slow and steady. You know, I don't want to be getting my hands in there, you know, every few days to trim the plants, etc. So, you know, my recommendation to you guys is if you can get away with less light, then try that. But consider the CO2 injection as well. And you're going to get this really great combination of slow and steady, but lush and algae free growth. So I'll leave it there guys. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you did enjoy this video, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Really excited for some new videos to come. Of course, I'll be doing a discus update coming soon. So super excited for that one. And just a little bit of a teaser. They've started spawning, so laying eggs everywhere. So that's exciting. Okay, you take care.
Keep on scoping. Cheerio. <laughs> Tommy! Come here. Say hello, Tommy, on in the video. Oh, I don't think many people have seen you recently on the video. Not many people have seen you lately on the videos. 